Good morning, team house arrest. I am very tired this morning. I don't know why. Um, we've just been sitting around. <laughs> I don't know why sitting around makes me so tired. Are you tired too from sitting around? Ugh. Um, I wore my Choose Your Own Adventure shirt today. These were some of my favorite books when I was growing up. Um, and this is War with the Evil Power Master. <laughs> so you can interpret that in many ways if you want. Seemed appropriate for today. Um, okay. I am about to jump into week 16. We are making so much progress. All right. Week 16. James has on his serious face. His probation officer university face. Mr. and Mrs. Jimenez have been interviewed and approved. The judge respects the situation. Mom talks to him like a robot. Yes. No. Yes. I understand. Her eyes are stuck to Levi. Like he's her son instead of just her son. Like she's a glob of plasma reaching and stretching to him. She gets her energy from knowing he's right there. She can't not touch him. You worry about Levi. We have Timothy under control. We have Timothy under control. Like I am a disease. James is pale again. He's out of breath, like he's run to the hospital. I don't think he's done any running. I think it's true. He really, really, really hates hospitals. Now I know you're kryptonite, James. Now I know if we have all our meetings at the hospital, you will forget to yell at me. All your power lost to fear of beeps and sick babies and stinging smells. Mrs. B, long blonde hair. It's almost like a lion's mane. Sharp eyes, green one day, gray the next, almost never blinking. She doesn't look like a devil, but I feel like I've made a deal with one. Does that count as talking about my feelings? Her computer is free for me to use. She'll even help me print stuff. But only if I talk about my feelings first. Only if we can have a dialogue first. Yeah. I deal with the devil, the green-eyed devil. Take this one, and this one, and these, and this. Jose's mom is throwing piles of clothes at me. Jose is in the garage working on the turtle car with his dad. You are so skinny, mijo. These are all from two years ago, but I think they will fit. A pile of clothes builds up at my feet like a snowdrift of Jose, the first generation. There is no way I can say no to these clothes. No way Jose's mom will let me say no. So I gather them up like ghosts of winter's past, and already I feel warmer. Jose's mom took me to the hospital, and we went, when we went into Levi's room, mom was asleep. Levi was asleep. It was dark and quiet, except for the heart beeps. And the nurse popped her head in the door, a grocery bag in her hand. Timothy, somebody left this for you. Inside the bag... Two new toothbrushes, candy bars, bananas, non-slip socks, a magazine about movie stars, a magazine about video games, a baby signing adventure book. Who is this from? The nurse just shrugged, smiled, closed the door. Levi is feeling much better. Maybe just one more week if we don't jinx it. And then he'll be home and I'll be home. No more IV tubes, no more doctors and pokes, no more hospital, no more fancy home-cooked dinners, no more Jose and Teresa and Sophia and Ale, no more Isa. How should I feel about that? I don't know how to feel about that. Books on the table. Pencils scribbling, oompa, oompa. Jose telling me, hurry, hurry, hurry up with your homework so we can play Halo. Yummy smells coming from the kitchen. Issa tapping her fingers on her nose, counting syllables or maybe integers. Everyone busy, but no wild eyes. Then a key in the door, shuffling shoes. Jose's mom shouts something from the kitchen. Jose's dad loosening his tie, dropping his briefcase. Issa stands and hugs him. Jose tells about the math test and how well he did. The oompa ing stops and Ale flies down the stairs. They are a crowd, even with Teresa and Sophia not at home. 
They are all talking at once. Jose's dad acts annoyed as he tries to get to the kitchen, but he's smiling. Jose's mom steps into the dining room, wipes her hands on her apron, kisses him big on the mouth, and I am still at the table, alone, feeling suddenly itchy to not be here in this house. But I can't be anywhere else. And Jose's dad says over the noise, Timothy! And he nods at me, and I nod back, swallowing a rock in my throat, wondering why everything just got so weird. <clears throat> Week 17. I know everything will be back to normal soon. I am not a moron, James. I know it will not be Jose's house all the time. I know it will not be Jose's mom taking me places. I know it will be back to business as usual. You don't have to talk to me like I'm an idiot. James, Mrs. B, school, mom, I will be back in the house arrest box. I mean, it's not like I really left it. I just had little tunnels, like those tunnels hamsters get to run around in. Those tunnels can stretch across a whole room, even up to the ceiling, where the little hamster runs and runs. But in the end, all tunnels lead right back to the cage. So don't worry, James, I get it. Back to normal soon, fine. Look who's on his wedge, dangling like a wiggly booger. Cutest booger I've ever seen. Maricel is humming and signing. Levi waves his hands without actually signing anything. I can tell, though. He's happy to be home. So happy. What is this? Mom shrieks in the kitchen. I knew she would. But I also know she won't give anything back. Tamales, enchiladas, frozen containers of borracho beans, some kind of cake. Jose's mom, she made us dinner for every night this week. I gave her my key so she could sneak inside and fill up the empty freezer while I was at school and mom got Levi home from the hospital. We can't accept this, mom says while she eats a cold tamale. Definitely not, I say, taking one, sprinkling masa crumbs down my shirt. We should totally give these back, I say, reaching for another. Mom laughs for the first time in a long time. She puts frozen beans in the microwave. We really shouldn't accept this, she says again, eating a cornbread muffin. Definitely not, I repeat. The microwave beeps, and we don't even get bowls. We just eat the beans right out of the container. Nominated charity, Mrs. B. Really? Come on, where did you get this? Who deserves a carnival of giving? Mrs. B, seriously, um, A, my family is not a charity, and two, mom would never say yes. Not in a hundred million years. Nominations for next year's carnival start today. By next year, we could all be flattened by an asteroid or destroyed by a zombie plague. I mean, you don't know. How can you plan for next year when tomorrow seems like a hundred years away? P.S. Don't rip flyers off the middle school walls. That is super creepy, FYI. Here's the thing with school, overall. It exists. It's a thing. I go to it. I come home. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It feels like a giant mountain just, bam, right in the middle of the road, slowing down the rest of my life in a super annoying kind of way. I can't get over it because it's just too much unmoving, unmoved, unmovable. And the only way around it is to carve a tunnel through it, through dirt and crap in every direction, trying to maybe find something useful along the way, but mostly just getting annoyed because there seems to be no end to the tunnel or the crap that just goes on forever and ever and ever. Okay, that uh, is the end of this week's uh, reading. I mean, the weeks in the book, not this whole week. Y'all, my days are just all messed up and my brain is fried. Um, <laughs> but I take solace in the fact that all of our brains are fried. Also, I will tell you that um, I get a question a lot. Kids want to know um, who my favorite character is in this book. And I will tell you that my favorite character is Jose's mom. 
um, Carmen because in my real life, when I was going through a lot of stuff that um, Timothy and his mom are going through in this book, um, I had a group of friends um, who were very fantastic and they made us fantastic food that they would leave in a, a cooler on our front doorstep because we couldn't have any germs in the house because my son was so sick. Um, so they would drop the food off in the cooler and then I would run outside and open it up and there would be delicious meals in there. Um, and I love remembering uh, how exciting that was to open the freezer and see all that food, all the love from everyone. Um, so anyway, a little behind the scenes story for you. Um, I feel like there was one more thing that I was supposed to talk about. Oh, I remember what it was. Okay, so I wanted to just point out that um, even though House Arrest is often called a middle grade book, um, this is a book for any reader. It really is. You could be in high school, you could be an adult, you can be in middle school, you can be upper elementary. It's, it's a book that I worked hard to write so that many different kinds of readers could enjoy it. Um, so if you are in high school, don't think like, oh, this is a baby book. Or if you're in middle school, don't think like, oh, it's about Juvie. It's probably like older kids or anything like that. This is a book for everyone. Um, that is something that I wanted to remind you of. Um, okay, I will be back tomorrow and um, we will read more. And um, everybody choose your own adventure today. Let's choose wisely. Separate adventures but somehow together online. I'm going to stop talking now. Goodbye.